Welcome to Temple Builders Followers of the Way. My name is Bear. Or you can call me Michael Barry Varner. It's uh, the 18th day of November, about 7.57 in the morning. I woke up this morning with a word on my heart that had been given to me before, and I ain't sure I spoke about it, but I think I've written about it. So I wrote it down this morning. And it had to do with the foolishness of preaching and giving to Caesar what Caesar's, and giving to God what's God's. And so I wrote down the verses of <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 1, 18-31, focusing on verse 21. And it says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world, by wisdom, knew not God. It pleased God, by the foolishness of preaching, to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because, of the, foolish, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. You know, we're there. That's where we're at. Us folks on the internet, us folks that ain't got a whole lot of education, you know, I can read my Bible. And I can see what it tells us to do. Yet we're still preaching and going to church on Sundays. We're still preaching and taking up tithes. That ain't what God wanted of us. Look at Matthew 12, no, Mark 12, 17. And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. And then you go to Matthew 22, verse 21. They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. You know, we got this big controversy at one time not too long ago about taking 
in God we trust off the money. That's fine with me. That money ain't what I trust in. It's what I need to survive in this world, and God's given me plenty of it. Not an abundance where I've got money to just be throwing away, but he's gave me enough to pay my bills. He's given me enough to where I can retire and serve him and him alone. A time is coming to when you truly need to give to God that which is God's. And what does it say in the first and greatest command that Jesus Christ talked to us about in Matthew 22, verses 37, 38, and 39? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, this is the first and greatest commandment on the Ten Commandments as well. That's it. You love God above all else with your whole being, your heart, your soul, and your mind. That's what God wants of us. Our whole being. And then the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. God wants us, his children, his called, his elect, his people, whatever you want to call us, Christian, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Catholic, Islam, whatever you want to call us. Me, I call us temple builders, followers of the way, because that's what God directed me on. That's what I'm doing. But he wants our heart, our soul, and our mind. And he wants us to stand dressed in his armor, not fighting against this flesh and blood crap that we see going on. We know the folks that live by the sword, they're going to die by the sword, but we ain't got to live by the sword here in the United States of America. We don't have to do it in the whole Americas. If we join together in truth, if we join together in love, He's used the foolishness of preaching to get us where we are today. Just think about it. If they hadn't have been all them preachers, think of what we wouldn't know now. But we've been given his word. It's been given out by the Gideons freely to millions of people. It's been given out to us in our schools. We've been given the word. Other countries ain't got it. But the United States does. Let's start living on what's in this word, not just what the preachers say up there on the church pews or the church pulpits. They're preaching money. But they're preaching the cross, and that's what's got me. They preach the cross. But then when I started reading my own Bible, I saw, huh, it says a little bit more. So I went to different denominations of churches. I started out in a Baptist church. I went to a holiness church. Maybe I started out in a holiness church. That's kind of a toss-up between my mom and my Aunt Linda. But I went to Pentecostal holiness. I went to Baptist. I went to Church of God. I went to Assembly of God. I went to Lutheran. I've been to a Catholic church. I've been to the Methodist church. I've been to non-denominational churches. I've been to all kinds of different church denominations. And every one of them fell short of what's taught in the Bible, what I read in my scriptures. So I had a brother yesterday ask me, what church do I go to? Well, I don't go to a church right now. Y'all are my church right now. Thursday morning breakfast at Waverly Place is my church right now. That's where I assemble with fellow believers. But my church is the body of Christ. It's, it's the word. It's turning myself and serving nobody but the king. That's my church, to be a servant of God right now. To serve the risen and coming king right now. 
And that's what he wants from all of us. To serve him. Stand. Unite together. And begin crying out like it says in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. Humble ourselves. Repent. And turn from our wickedness. Join together like it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Many members of one body. We're all the body of Christ. We're all God's church. We're all his bride. But it tells us plainly that we are no longer our own, but we are bought with a price and he dwells within us. So we are God's temple. Let's join all of God's temple together. A line is being drawn in the sand. You know, I talked about the wheat and the tares, and I talk about tolerance, and I tell you, there ain't none. And it's plain to see there ain't none. The wickedness and sin is going to be driven out, either in wrath or by us standing together in righteousness and becoming one nation under God. No, that ain't really in the Bible as far as America, but it is in the Bible that wickedness and sin is going to be driven out. It's going to be purged by fire, and the, after the refiner's fire, you're going to see what's left. The thing is, Jesus Christ came to save the world. Jesus Christ came that each one of us might have eternal life. He didn't say when the fire was going to purge everything. Until that time comes, we, the people, need to join together and unite as one nation under God. We need to start walking in righteousness and setting ourselves apart just like we are told to do. He ain't asking for your money. He's asking for your heart. He's asking for your soul. He's asking for your mind. He's asking for you. That's what he wants. Is you. To love him. And to walk in the way of his son, Jesus Christ. I hope that this message touches someone. And I'm going to get off of here now and go and get my son. And I'm going to love my family. This will probably be the message for the next week or so. So I love you. I'm glad I had the opportunity to speak with you just a little bit. And I hope it touches the hearts of someone. I'd like for you to join me in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. Amen.